Hello, I'm Jennifer Bonnier, city producer for the Nashville 48 Hour Film Project, and I want to welcome you to the We Foster Film Nashville 48 Hour Film Project Workshop. This talkback was filmed live in front of a studio audience of aspiring filmmakers preparing to make a short film in just 48 hours during the 2022 Nashville 48 Hour Film Project. Expert filmmakers took time to discuss their approach to making a movie through both technical and creative discussions in their designated craft. We hope this shared information will both educate and inspire you to make your next film. We would love to see you out at one of our events and have you make movies with us right here in Nashville. For more information on the 48 Hour Film Project, please visit us on the web at 48hourfilm.com. And for more information about NECAT's ongoing We Foster Film program, visit us on the web at kneecatnetwork.org. Our next topic for our We Foster Film Nashville 48 Hour Film Project workshop is writing and acting. Originally, this program was supposed to be presented by Ted Welch, but he is out there living the dream, making a film right now. So I stood in, in true 48 hour fashion, and presented this topic to our live audience. I hope you enjoy. Hello everybody, my name is Jennifer Bonnier and I'm the Nashville City Producer for the 48 Hour Film Project. I am here to talk to you guys about writing and acting. Now, uh, most of you who know me know that that is not my usual shtick. I tend to be on the producing side, however, I have been in many writing rooms or on teams in the past that have had collaborative writing situations and I've also been forced to act in many 48s. So I'm gonna hopefully do my best presenting this topic for you today. So. Let's dive into writing first. So preparing for the 48 is a difficult thing. We all know that you can't really do any writing beforehand. There's nothing that you can actually get on paper because you have to show up on Friday night, you have to draw your genre, you have to be given your elements before any of that creative process can start. However, you can do some preparation, which means you can watch things, you can study. What are you attracted to as a writer? Do you enjoy writing comedies? Do you enjoy writing dramas? What can you go and study to ensure that you have just a whole repertoire of ideas floating around in your head so that when you draw that genre, you've got something to, to chew on and dive into? So, with that, we also want to talk about understanding your strengths and weaknesses, not only as a writer, but as a team. So if I were sitting in a writing room, which <laughs> I have been in many that were very improv based. Now, I love to talk about improv because when I competed many years ago in the 48, the teams that I tended to compete on were very improv based, meaning we would sit down, we would go, okay, so one we did was um, we drew sci-fi. We were like, you know what? We think we can make a little robot. Let's, let's make it about a guy and a robot. And so we're sitting there and drawing out all of these points, but we really don't know what's gonna happen. We don't know how we're gonna make the robot talk. We don't know what the conversations are gonna be. And we write down these bullet points and then we put that weight onto the actor to do the improv. So that is one tactic that you can take, um, but make sure that your actors are ready for improv, because if you have a team of actors who has never improv before, that is setting yourself up for failure. So you gotta really understand the strengths of your team as a whole, and write to what you know you have. If you know you have access to an incredible studio like Kneecat here, you could write something about a newscast. You could write something that takes you into a studio space, but if you do not have access to an airport, please don't put a plane into your film. You're just setting your team up for failure again. So really understand the strengths of the locations you have, the strengths of um, the team members that are on uh, the project with you. So um, if you are writing as a team, meet with the other writers, brainstorming and writing as a group. So <laughs> writing as a group is always fun. We've all heard these saying, too many cooks. That is a very real thing in the 48, especially when tensions can run high. You have a very strict time limit. We're, we're talking 48 hours. One rule that I like to follow as a producer is that your team should be done writing that evening. So when you draw your elements on Friday, your team should immediately start writing. And I like to try and have that script finished by around midnight. That way you're able to send that out to everyone 
else and everybody can be digesting it. Your DP can be thinking through shots with your director, your actors can be ingesting that information and really trying to figure out who those characters are going to be. If you push it too much later, people are gonna be showing up on set and they're not gonna have that script. So really make sure that you have a timeline established and when you are going into the writing room that the writers know that. <laughs> because when you have a big group, it's very easy for that writing process to go on and on and on. Um, and we just talked about preparing a schedule for your first draft, so check that box. And even improv um, requires preparation, which we've uh, kind of already touched on. I'm a big fan of the improv, I'm not gonna lie, but it takes a lot. So, okay, we've kind of touched on these already as well. Um, writing to your strengths, location, of course, if you have access to a school, pool, airplane hangar. Um, we want to write to those things, but uh, multiple locations on a 48, just to kind of put my producer hat back on, can be a detriment. Sometimes it's amazing. I have seen some 48s that have taken teams to so many different locations. I had the pleasure of working on a project um, called Contrary to Likeness that took us to, I don't even know, it was like 15 locations. We were hopping all over the place. And it was a really fun experience, but man, was that really taxing for the team because you're constantly having a location move. And when you have 48 hours, that's not ideal because everybody's constantly in a car as opposed to being behind the camera. So sometimes it can work in your favor, absolutely, if you have access to everything. But as a writer, you can try and help limit those locations so that you're not wasting precious moments in a car and traveling. All right, structure. This is one that I feel very deeply about. So we all know that good scripts have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Um, that's just like writing 101, right? But something happens in the world of the 48 when you start where it's just like, we all forget that somehow. And I don't know why that happens, but as somebody who watches every single 48 that gets made here in Nashville now, you see sometimes that like people kind of lose their way. So please try and remember when you are writing or you are helping to execute the script on set that those that structure is really vital to telling a good story. Story is king in the 48. We are very easy to forgive, oh, that camera angle wasn't perfect, oh, that sound wasn't perfect. We're very, we're very forgiving when it comes to that because we all know what it's like to be doing a 48. But one thing that we have a really hard time forgiving is story, and that goes back to structure. So make sure that you really wrap it up. And I think this um, harkens back to what Matki was saying earlier about how you are making a film that is right here, right now. Don't think about the future, think about what you need to make this film the best film possible. Keep it contained. Don't add in another character because you just wanna have a silly, quirky moment. No, keep it contained to what's important to that story. Um, and we've touched on this already, just about knowing your actors and writing to their strengths. So, always important, but the best thing you can do on a 48 is just know what you have and write to that. All right, on the big night continued. Um, it's about being flexible. We're all very familiar with that concept with a 48. Even just like today, it's, you know, I, I am not an expert writer, but I am happy to talk through it. It happens, we're going to have mix-ups. Somebody's gonna get sick. Somebody's gonna have a flat tire. Something's going to happen. You're going to um, not have a team member be available, or you're going to lose access to a location, or you're going to lose access to equipment. Lean on your team, they're there for a reason. Work together, be flexible. There is a solution, there always is. You just gotta keep your head straight and dive right in and find an answer. All right, um, I love this, just going back to this uh, topic again about having a cutoff time uh, so that you have your script ready because it is important to make sure that everybody has time to digest it. We, we touched on this, but if you show up Saturday morning and nobody's read the script, there's going to be an hour or two of everybody trying to understand what it is we're capturing. So make sure that everybody is on the same page before you arrive on set. All right, moving right along. Acting. It's very funny that I am up here chatting with you all about acting. Um, the couple of times that I have acted in a 48 have not been by choice, I will say. Um, I got started in the 48 when I was in film school, 
And for those of you who attended film school, you know that um, the female to male ratio is very male heavy. So I was constantly the only female on our productions. Mm -hmm. uh, so that meant I was constantly being thrown into the acting role, which was, I mean, honestly, very fun, but it's just not my first passion. So um, I'm, I'm excited to be chatting with you all about it, but it's, uh, it's not something that is the nearest and dearest to my heart. I love the producing role. So uh, moving right along into making choices. On a 48, a director is managing so many people and trying to get shots that the actor needs to come in as prepared as possible. Yes. Yes, please. And that goes back to ensuring that you have a cutoff for your writers. Your writer needs to get that script to the best place it can be. You need to send that out to your actors as soon as possible so that they have time to digest everything, that they have time to figure out who that character is and bring something to the table as well. Um, like we said, a director has so many things in their mind on a 48 because it's moving so fast. So as an actor, please try and come prepared and maybe with some ideas you're that you can bring to the table because really remember at 40 it's a it's a collaborative project film is a collaborative medium so don't be afraid to bring ideas to the table as an actor be as off book as you can be yes please so um, I know I already spoke a little bit about uh, improv and how that's something that I have participated with in the past that's how some teams work but sometimes you have a beautiful script written and so you want to make sure that as an actor you're coming prepared and having those lines memorized that way nobody's ever waiting on you to be able to get those lines out and get them on tape all right, script analysis. Uh, your script tells you how to deliver the lines. If you are lost, a question is a question. So don't make it a statement. I think that's a really good point that he's brought up. Um, if you can take just a minute to really digest what the writers have given you, odds are the answer to your question is in there. So really make sure that you dive in to that script and digest what the writers have sent your way. All right. For me, AKA Ted, for, for Ted, he likes to ask himself the seven questions that Stanlowski, I can say that, came up with and then uh, break the characters down that way. So the questions are, who am I? Where am I? What time is it? What do I want? Why do I want it? How will I get what I want? And what must I overcome to get what I want? Excellent questions. And I'm just going to let that one be. And then, all right, have fun. Remember that acting is just pretending. So go play pretend with friends and have a blast doing it. Yes, at the end of the day, the 48 is truly meant to be, like we said, a collaborative, fun experiment. Um, somebody once said that the 48 is like summer camp. And I love that statement so much because it is. This is an opportunity for us as filmmakers, no matter what our role is, to come together and play. We get to experiment. It's literally just 48 hours. It's 48 hours of our life. Think about how much time you've spent on other productions and the dedication that you have to give to those. But this is just two days. Go in, give it your all. If it sucks, I bet you're going to walk away learning something really important. If it's amazing, oh my god, you did something amazing in two days. So be really proud of that. But ultimately, just have fun. And I think that might be the end of Ted's notes, possibly. So I know that I am not um, an expert writer or an expert actor, but does anybody have any questions that I could touch on or answer for you guys? No worries if not. Jennifer, over here. Oh, hi, sorry. It's all right, it's difficult to see. I don't see any lights. <laughs> yeah. Um, I found in years past, uh, for me, we would kind of get together with the team, like right after we got the genre and everything else. Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, okay, anybody have any ideas or whatnot? And then, you know, I might incorporate some of those, whatever. But when it came to writing, at least for me, I had to like, okay, thank you for your ideas, and then had to go off. Because I think too many cooks in the kitchen makes it more difficult. Your thoughts? I agree with that. Um, so I started 
competing in the 48 when I was in film school and our mentality back then was like, oh my God, let's just all get together. It's so much fun. We'll have everybody in the room. And as we progressed and continued to compete, everyone in the room got smaller and smaller and smaller. And that is because it's, filmmaking has a hierarchy for a reason. A director exists to lead. They are the captain, they are the visionary. You know what I mean? We all need to have somebody who is that Northern star. And when you have 20 people in a room, I agree, it just becomes too many cooks. The ideas, the concepts can get muddled because you don't have that Northern star. Props to anybody that can do it, but I like to have like two to four, I think is the max that we've ever done. Or there was once a um, project I worked on where I think there was gonna be six or seven of us. We all sat down, we threw ideas out, and then we let the writer go do his thing. So it was a little brainstorm session to get them going. But then ultimately, again, we, gave, we handed it off to somebody. Any other thoughts, comments, questions? Andrew. <clears throat> Would you agree that probably the 48's biggest problem is, uh, is for a team is ego? And Ooh. probably writing would affect, or ego would affect the writing team the most. Because theoretically, the writing team is probably the most well rested while they're doing their job. That's because you know, they're at the beginning, and so really they're just fighting each other. Then, <laughs> and the timeline, <laughs> but everyone's fighting the timeline. So it's it's you know the beginning of it. So I mean, it's a really great question talking about ego as a whole. So I do understand your point of is ego highest at the beginning because you're well slept. Um, and I would say sometimes it all depends on the person. Personalities uh, clash, absolutely. And that's why I think the 48 is such an amazing experience because you get to work with so many different people in such a short time, time constraint. It allows you to quickly test out whether or not you're going to jive with someone. Uh, and that's one of the reasons I competed for so long. It was a really nice way to determine whether or not uh, I work well with this person and want to continue working with them in the future. It's, like I said, 48 hours. So uh, yes and no, Andrew, I will say, because once you get tired, your true personalities come out as well. So I think ego is always an issue. Hopefully the people that you brought onto your team don't bring their ego to the table, but it all comes out at some point. Um, but yeah, I, it's an interesting perspective I've never thought about before. Hmm. Did I answer your full question? I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Right. Any other Here. thoughts? Yes, sorry. Um, so uh, you gave a good, uh, good insight about the big night, like knowing location. As, as a producer, what would you suggest, like, I don't know, like get in touch with a list of people that you know that would be able to, oh, you can come here to my coffee shop and I don't know, do yeah. you have any tips and tricks in that way? Absolutely. So um, to dive into producing a little bit, which Cameron will be up next to really get into and discuss with you guys more in depth. but. For me as a producer, when I'm looking at locations, I want to have as many options as possible. There are 30 different genres you can draw in the 48. So the amount of locations you could possibly want is endless. You're like, but what if I draw a school film? What if I draw, you know what I mean? Like, how, how are you supposed to execute these things if you don't have um, access to a certain location? What I would do is once you've established your base team, sit down with them and see what is easily available. Like, does somebody live in a home that, you know, is just like stuck in the 70s? Great, you've got that in your back pocket. Does somebody work at a coffee shop and they're close with the owner and could potentially get us in for a couple of hours? Great, put that on your list. And go through the places that everybody just easily has access to. And then that way, when you get into the writing room, you know what's available and are trying to write to that. Now, sometimes there's going to be situations where you're writing and you just decide, it would be absolutely amazing if I had a park. Like, it just, this is the perfect script for our cast. This is the perfect script for um, the team that we have. We just are missing that park. That obviously gets complicated in a 48. 
But what you can do is hopefully you have a large enough team and then you can sit down and um, do some like Googling. You can figure out where to go and find something and send a team member out to try and find that location while you're shooting other aspects of your film. We've had to do that before. Uh, it is not a fond memory, but Sunday, I want to say it was at like two o'clock, we realized we were missing a part of the film. Like, we just desperately needed to have this moment and it needed to be outside and we couldn't figure out where to do it and wound up driving to um, several different homes of our team members and found like this perfect crazy little bush in the backyard that looked great and we could pass it off as a park and so that's what we wound up doing. But we intentionally put that to the end because we knew we didn't have access to it immediately and needed to go find it. If that answers your question a little bit. <laughs> Yeah. Any other thoughts, comments, questions, concerns? All right. Well, I appreciate you guys so much um, being here and putting up with me. I know I am not Ted, but I really enjoyed getting to relive my couple of acting days with you guys <laughs> and, and harken back to the time when I got to be in the writer's room a few times. And I, I hope that um, you guys have an amazing time, this 48, getting to act and write. I hope you enjoyed this discussion on We Foster Film, Nashville 48 Hour Film Project. We want to thank all of our sponsors who make the 48 Hour Film Project possible. We especially want to thank the Degas Family Foundation for helping us make this program possible. We Foster Film is named in loving memory of Foster Degas, who loved movies, monster makeup, Halloween, and all things creative. We are constantly thankful for the impact he has had with NECAT and his ongoing legacy of creative and technical educational programming. To learn more about We Foster Film and NECAT, please visit us on the web at necatnetwork.org. To learn more about the Nashville 48 Hour Film Project and how you can make a movie in a weekend, please visit us at 48hourfilm.com. Until next time, I'm Jennifer Bonnier. Goodbye.